Oh boy! It's here! Finally here, the Five Nights of Freddy's The Full Closet. It's finally here. Are you excited? Because I'm ripping excited. I am ready for Friday or oh, fun time Friday or oh, whatever the hell is on the foot screen. Because I'm ready for chapter one or probably fourteen, so that's two, yeah. Yeah, chapter 15. So, the 15 chapters. Just like I thought there was. Don't worry, I didn't spoil myself, I just checked the top of the pages so I will keep that. Charlie! Oh yeah, chapter 1. Charlie! John comes through the wall. Which was the place where she been, choking on the dust of the explosion. The ruin shifted beneath his feet, and he stumbled over a block of concrete. He caught himself just before falling. Squeezing his hand wall, he grabbed fancy at the broken surface. He reached it, the place where she been. He could feel her presence beneath it. The place where she's been. Could you hear the delicious? Took a whole uh, immense block of concrete and it, it were all swept. He managed to do it from the place, from the pile and overturn it, where it fell with a thud. Wrapping the ground he stood on. Over his head, a steel beam creaked, wavy precariously. Charlie! John cried her name again, as she shoved another block of concrete away. Charlie, I'm coming! He was grasping for breath, moving the remains of the house with deafness, a dread of the field strength. But the Jaguar was running thin. He set his jaw and gone. His palm swift as he tried to sniff the next bark. And when he looked, he realized Daisy that his hand that streak of blood whenever they touched. He wiped his palm on his jeans and tried again. This time the broken concrete moved and he bounced it on his spine. Again he's making the mistake of putting a comma and then and. Sorry I don't like being a granny boss. He literally did that again. There's a comma and then there's and. Three books in the wall, man! Three books in the wall? Why does one mistake like that? <sighs> Sorry, I, <laughs> I like being a grand enough to sometimes. <laughs> but this is just a sad start of the book. I was five. It three steps away. Then dropped it on a pile of debris. It crashed down into the rubble and shattered rock and grass beneath it. Starting at average of his own, 
And then, beneath the sound of the record, you heard a whisper. Charles. Charles! Charles stopped speaking. He whispered back to her, and again the woman moved on the street. This time he felt her, and the, again the woman moved on the street. Oh wait, sorry. This time he fell, landing hard on his back, knocking the wind out of him. He struggled to the heel, his lungs useless. Then the whole scene he began to breathe. He sat up, light headed, and saw what the court feel with li in a little hidden room in Charlie's high road house. Before him was a plain smooth metal wall, and the center was a door. It was only an outline without hinges of a handle, but he knew what it was because Charlie had known. When she stopped running in the midst of the escape and pressed her cheek against the surface, calling to someone or something inside, Charlie. She whispered his name again, and the sound seemed to come from everywhere at once, bouncing off the walls of the room. John got to his feet and put his hands on the door. It was cool to touch. He pressed his cheek to it, just as Charlie had, and it grew colder, like he was dreaming the walls for his skin. John pulled back and put the old cold spot on his face. Then watching the door as the shining metal the door before his eyes. Its colour failed and then the door itself began to fit. It saw a scene vanishing into the like frosted glass. A John saw there was a shadow behind the glass. The figure of a person, the figure stepped closer. The door clarified until he could almost see through it. Move closely, mirroring the figure on the other side. It had face. Cheek and parts, its eyes, like a statue, sculpted on unseen. John peered through the door between them. His breath crowding the near transparent bar. Uh, then suddenly the eyes stepped open. The figure packaged the pack the packaging before us. The eyes fixed on nothing. They were crowding and are moving. Dead. Someone laughed. <laughs> A frantic familiar sound that echoed in the small seal room, and John looked wryly around the source. Laugh rose in pitch, going louder and louder. Uh, uncovered the ears in it, and it was noise reaching no tear unbearable. Charlie! He cried again. John just away. Second book we all who started some kind of secret where we're not really good knowing what's going to happen. Or to even eat. John just away. His heart racing, the laughter went on, falling out of the dream. Disoriented, his dark eyes darted on the wall. Then, this on the TV, where a clown's painted face filled the screen. Caught in the crowd, such a fit of laughter, John set up. One of his decorous watches then the interest. Check the time, said a diary. He had just enough time to get to work. Back, taking Moses' cash back. 
On the TV screen, a local news anchor was holding a bag up for mail and introduction at circus class, complete with a painted face, a red nose, and a rainbow colored wig. Great cow. Around the neck was a collar. And a double bracket blog in the red sun. And he was look. He was wearing a full yellow clown suit with a red pom pom for buttons. So tell me, the anchor said lightly, did you always have this costume, or did you make an accessory for the grand old play? John switched the TV off and headed for the shower. He then had it all day, but the noise was still unbearable. Yeah, yeah. Creepy laughter is so creepy. I hate it. Never gonna. A waxy, kanging beard, hunched by shadow, and intermittent air shadow casting on Jack Hunter. <coughs> oh, best day. I still have that baby. John closes his eyes, trying to bot it out. The vibrations restart. Jack, fill your mouth. I missed the noise, the sound of the laughter, suddenly rang in his ears. <laughs> oh god. The figure for the scene came to him again, just on his back, and he felt a stuff. Oh, that thing. If he had turned his head the right way, he could see the face behind the door. John! John! Uh. John! John Ted, do a steady foot away. Give me a position. A quarter of days of time. John Shaw, he just see the chaos around him. Hey, some of the guys are coming way out of this. You coming? Do you say? John Hensley, come on, be good for you. All you do is work and sleep. See that? Let's see, and sat John in his shoulder. Right, good for me. John smiled back. The look at the ground was as it investigated. I just had so much going on right now. He told me to sound to bid me. What? What's going on? Just let him know he's treated by. He clapped John on the shoulder again and headed back to the fourth one. Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> and then back to the forefront. John watched it side away. It hadn't been the first time John had turned him back. Not the second time or the third, and it occurred to him that eventually he would stop trying. That the moment when they would all just give up. Maybe that would be the best. Sure. Another voice called. Now what? It was the foreman, shouting at him from the door, standing on the office. The trailer that had been bought on site for the duration of the construction, a sat the curtsy on the dirt edge.
John George Costa Construction Zone. Ducky through a vinyl seat to show his doorway. Lowers later, he is standing across the folding table from the foreman. The practice wood panel barely holding to the wall surrounding him. I got a call, guys, out there. Tell me you're distracted. I'm just focused on my job, that's all, John said. But he is dying and trying to sense his frustration from leaking out. All the smiles on the face of me. Focused. Um. But. Let's go dust the dust. Dust all the stars. So, I gave you a chance. Because your cousin said you were hard work. I overlooked the fact that you woke up your last job and never came back. Well, I took a risk on you. John saw. Yes, uh, no. I would have said just recently. Look, I don't want to tell you. I don't understand the problem. Your action just now, you look like you're dangering out there. You're not a team player. What? This is an active construction job. If you're in La La Land or you're not thinking about the safety of other men out there, someone's going to get hurt or killed. I'm not saying you have to start thinking about why you want her. But I'm saying you have to be on the team. They have to trust that you're not going to get the balance account. John gave on saying no. It's a good job, John. I think these are good guys out there too. Workers are these you just die these days. And I need you to get your head out. Okay. Because next time I see the crowd, so just don't put me in that. Just you know that. Yeah. I understand, John said numbly. He didn't move, standing on the stag down on the desk table with the officers. I'm still waiting to the guests on the tent. Okay, get out. John went. The desk down had taken enough of the last few minutes of his workday. He held some grain to put away some of the critters. Then headed to his car and muttered goodbye. Hey! Said Gay Cola. The John's dog. Lack or. Right. Some bugger. Oh, of course. Right. Me next time. Yeah. Ugly. Come on, this the excuse to go that new kid spray. That dog has been bagging. We always busy to hear about the robot. Cry me out. John Paul to the world of science, are they? What place? And said, Are you calling? I think X again. So took a few steps back as he didn't come too close to him. Left. He is not calling, John said. God, it was all about his friend. Something that might have been cool in high school. Now it's just a reminder that the old kid who hasn't moved on. A rock of that gave a rock shame that we face over the years. Step heavily, a pool of dust shouting out the sides of the car as he jumped into it. His hands were shaking. He closed his eyes and closed the wheel. Then he reached out. It's just like now. He whispered, then opened his eyes now. I like something they went down with the set. Turn the key. The 
The giant pole should have been 10 minutes, but the route he took was to half an hour. And they avoided driving to town. If he didn't drive to town, there was no way somebody in to pay what he didn't want to talk to. Or important, he didn't want uh, he did want to, to be the team president. He could have mustered a wheel with gun control at all. John was a team player, not anymore. For almost six months, he had been coming and going from home to work with his training on track. Starting to buy food now and again. Then, but not much else. He only spoke when necessary or avoided eye contact. He was startled when people spoke to him. Whenever the co-worker was saying hello or strange in actual times, he made conversation, but he was getting better at speaking while walking away. He was always polite, but I also make it clear he had someone to be made obvious when necessary by suddenly turning in the opposite direction. Sometimes he felt like he was fading away and just uh, jolly and disappointed. To be reminded he could still be seen. He pulled into a cluster, a two story pair of things, knowing meant for long. Attendance. There was a light in the window of the office, manager's office. He tried for a month to track the young around, then give it up. Concluding that was no pattern. He grabbed the envelope for the grub and a headed towards the door. He knocked and there was no response. To the inside, he could and it's out to do this. He asked again, and this time the door opened partially. No wonder with the scale of a long face dog appeared out of it. And I died, Daria. John died. He didn't say that. Went tech. John had a uh, motor. And no one's age, I came out yesterday, but no one's here. Where's the joint business, Alice? Now he appears in the clear thing at the thing he sucked. The lights were off, so yeah, it was a business house. Now we have found a cheap. What was the thing he found? I saw you hung on a plant. Said the butler. Oh yeah. Jump here to show the truth to your body. You thought my to see it from where they stood. It's nice to take care of something. John tried to start again, but gave up quickly. He go to the vacuum and just with that allowed for no empty. That's allowed, right? Do you want to have a pad? Yes, you can have a pad. Then he took a step inside and looked poised to close the door. People don't use the settle in here, that's all. Usually there's a house, then a wife, and then the van. Alright, John looked down at his suit. He just didn't wash the cigar. The door closed. But, yeah. John considered the door for a minute, then headed to his ground floor apartment in front of the bed. Now, no, it was a single bedroom unit with a full bath and a half. Kitchen. He kept the blinds while he was away to show that he had nothing. The area was full of burglaries, and it seems that you see better tell the fact there was nothing to steal. Once inside, John locked the door behind him, and so he shed the tail face. His father was cool and dark and quiet. He sighed and rubbed his temples. Headache was still there, but he was growing accustomed to that. Don't go closer to headaches. That's headaches. The place was mercy of first that combat way.
and the only person shot that he added to the living room was a stack of four cardboard boxes full of books against the walls below the window. He glanced at them with a disillusioned air. He went to the back room and sat down at the bed. The Sphinx Biggish Disfigure said, didn't bother to turn on the mic. There's enough daylight still sticking through the small dingy room that was above his bed. John looked towards the jacket with a familiar face back there, toying around his head. I don't know where to be. I don't fear no. Sorry, Alison. What did you do today? John said, making the push by the guy as though a spark of recognition. Fear not to step back. Banking, its eyes filled with eyes dark and lifeless. You look terrible, sir, for me, John stood, and post around his head. Clearly, all the spells of mouth bored and deadly sadness. Just die of fate, and he cut his head by his ears. There he is. Time to throw you away. The kids sit there almost every day. Hey, cut your jaw. Jack on gesture carefully and turned away. Do not want to look for He closed his eyes, not expecting sleep to come, but hopefully he had his first well the night before. Or the night before that. He had come to dread sleep. He pulled it off as long as he could, walking miles of road into wait the night, turning home trying to read off. There at the wall. So the reality was fussing me. Grabbed a pillow and went back to the living room. He lay down on the couch, swinging his neck on the arms and sighed in the middle part of his giving on his ears. They grabbed the loaf on the floor and turned on the TV. The screen was spiked of why. And the reception was terrible. He could scarcely out make her face to describe this. But the chat sounded like a saucer was wrapped and cheerful. Turn the volume over and set the bath. Sure, yeah. And how was the tumbling noise? It was too slowly. He, he drifted to sleep. Her arm was limp. Yeah. The only part of her he could see dangling through the twisted metal suit. But when the red moon down skin pulled on the ground, Charlie was all alone. He heard the voice again. Sorry. Don't let go, John! Don't let go! John! She called my name. The thing shot at her again. Sound of the truth, Daffy a crunchy. He still Charlie wife was on as if the world around them was disappearing. And as the noise echoed in his head, his mind comes up for the unbidden. The crunchy sound of a bell the tearing was empty now. John loved his eyes and stuff. She were you away, I still yelled at that. Really, if that Charlie would bring him to wake you up. John set up, for his neck cage. The cow was too small, and his back was cracked. His head ached, and he was exhausted but wetter. He saw the judge still working away from his sister. He went out, locking the door forcefully behind him, and breathing in the night air. Yeah, I'm going to stop there. Next time! Yeah. Hope you find out why on earth it's so dressed as a clown. <laughs> See you guys then.